Hey everybody, it's Sean with the Good Dog. We've got Miss, uh, it's Lola, right? Miss Lola just came in last night. Uh, Miss Lola's got uh, dog aggression issues, uh, pretty serious stuff, and um, major um, unleash reactivity. Uh, her owner hasn't been able to walk her in nine months and uh, couldn't even do it before video for us because um, things were so bad. She's so nervous about walking her. Um, so all I'm going to do right now is we shot a little before video yesterday. It was getting dark though. So now we're going to shoot. Just I'm going to put a prong on her and start working her on the leash and getting her, uh, getting her acclimated to a prong and see mainly of course, we're going to be shooting for getting her to walk nice, but what I'm mainly looking for is to get rid of some of this frantic energy, some of this anxious, um, nervous stuff that's contributing tremendously to her dog reactivity stuff. So if I can get her to really calm down and exist in a, in a much lower place, she's going to feel much different about everything else in her environment. So yes, we want her to walk nice, we want her to heal, but that's really just a gateway to get her to feel different up here. So I'm going to take her out front just to, for a quick spin, and then I've got the prong already fitted it, um, fitted it, fitted it in the office and uh, so she's good to go with that but I haven't walked her on it haven't done any pressure with her on it. so let's check it out come on lady so you see we haven't done anything since yesterday all the all the the same goodness is still there and we still got nice strong pulling um, not exactly tuned into the handler um, not exactly enjoying a relaxed walk right so just to make sure Nobody thinks we're like pulling the wool over their eyes. We trained her all night and now she's ready. Last last sled dog exhibition. So I'm going to start with the small, see if we can get a small to work. The medium, because she's such a, she's got such a small neck, sorry I got slimed. She's got such a small neck that the medium doesn't allow many prongs on there, so we won't get much influence. And now I'm going to switch, you guys see I put the, our trusty carabiner on there. All clipped up, good to go. She looks safe. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to just, I'm not going to do any like hard pressure right now. I'm just going to let her get used to the sensation. Because as far as I know, I don't know if she's ever had one on. She hasn't had one on with us, but I want to make sure she's comfortable with the sensation and then teach her how to turn pressure off and relax her at the same time. Come on, lady. Come on. No, we're not sled dogging. Interesting, right? So just the change in tool, like, I don't know if you can tell, but the energy is already different. I haven't done anything. So because it's becoming a little uncomfortable, she's not just defaulting to this. She's starting to go, well, let me slow down a little bit. So that's the magic of the tool already. We're already seeing like a calmer dog, right? And I haven't done anything. So pretty awesome just, just getting a tool that actually tunes the dog in and creates a little bit of a little bit of handler existence. Somebody at the end of this leash actually matters. There we go. Nice. So I don't want to do anything firm or anything hard. I just want to get her used to this. Calm her down. I don't know, hopefully you guys can also see the energy shift, right? Hopefully you guys can see that she's mellowing out. Nothing magic going on, just a better tool. Hi. Just a better tool and, and just some, some mild kind of little, pay attention. Pay attention to me and the tool. I just put a little, excuse me, put a little pressure when she gets out to the end of the leash. Nothing fancy, right? A little pressure. As soon as she gives, I relax the leash. So I'm going to do a couple more moments with this, and then I'm going to see if I can get her to actually walk next to me. Basically what I like to do is I like to get her more relaxed, comfortable with the pressure, and then see if I can use very gentle pops to cultivate a new walk, which would be right next to me. If that doesn't work, if, if that doesn't work, pops aren't enough and she's ignoring them or she's too too tense physically and too tense mentally, then I'll probably do 180s with her to get her to relax, come down a little bit, and then the pops should work for that. There we go. 
Oh, there's saw a human back there. Huh. I thought it was just a sled. Not sure? There we go. Front pressure. You notice it's not a jerk pressure, it's not a pop. I'm letting her get out there, and as soon as she gets kind of close, I actually give her a little bit of extra leash just to kind of take away the, the jolt. I want to make sure it's a real gentle kind of thing. There we go. I'm getting somewhere. Now, hopefully, this all makes sense st strategically to you guys. And once I get her more chilled out and mellow, I'll be able to communicate with her in a real simple fashion. Then I won't need much pressure. We should be already set up for success. If I were to come out of the gate, put a prong on her and just started popping, she'd still be stressed and tense, and then she'd have the added sensation of harder prong pops, and everything would get kind of dodgy. Now we're kind of going for a more mellow, mellow thing. Good, good. Okay, so now I'm feeling pretty good. I've got her in a pretty good space. I'm gonna to go to my, to my next, my next uh, move, which is gonna be shorten up the leash like I'm doing a regular walk which is going to be, I want her right next to me, and then I'm just going to use little pops to see if we can cultivate a nice heel. Let's check it out and see what we get. We've got other decisions or other options if this doesn't work. She's also used to kind of just going anywhere, so I'm also going to show her that I need you in one spot. That franticness is not good for her. It's, it's an expression of the franticness in her mind, and if she's doing that, there's no way she can be more relaxed and chilled out on the walk. So little pops. I'm popping a little bit to the back and a little bit to the side. If you can see my hand, she's pretty responsive, so not having to use much. But she's she's not used to doing anything this structured. So I'm doing a lot of little, a lot of little conversations with her. Like, no, I need you right here. It's like, what about here? No, right here. What about there? No, it's right here. And I'm also walking purposely really slow, so I want to challenge her a bit. You give me a nice thing, slow the energy down, slow the whole approach down. I'm going to turn it on. How's everybody feel about the energy shift? Hopefully you can see a really dramatically different thing from the dog that we saw coming out of the house or from yesterday's uh, footage. which is a real frantic, out of her tree kind of energy. So even though I haven't done any dog work with her right, uh, dog work with her yet, just having done this is a huge bit of foundation for the dog work. Because if I've got her mind already in this gear from a 10 down to like a two, man, I'm already set up for success. I'm already set up, I'm already set up for something good. So there's dogs right there. So she sees them. So that's, this is gonna be a really telling thing because it's gonna allow me to see how, how much how much intensity there is behind her focus, which is pretty good. Right, so she's, she's walking with me somewhat okay, but mentally she's over there. So it's both good and bad. It's good that she's, she's using, she's using some, some pretty good impulse control to stay right here. But I'd love if, if, if she was soft enough about the other dogs to, to break this focus off. But she's not there yet, so we'll have to see what we get. So I'm going to do a little something. Oh, we're going this way. Don't look at that. There you go. See how soft she is? And you saw that 180. I don't know if you guys noticed. She did this whole thing. Very soft pressure, but she's a very soft dog. So what I did was that, that focus on those dogs down there, none of my pops were having any effect on her and I don't want to go high and crank on her. So what I did was I let her get out in front of me, not paying attention, turned, two hands like this, overhand, pop. As soon as she gets to the end of the lace, she goes, holy mackerel, what happened? Oh, Sean's back there. I got to get with Sean. I shouldn't be staring at those dogs. So she kind of self-corrects and learns that she needs to focus on me. Come on, lady. Once again, Laura, and other peeps, I'm not looking to really like 
go after dog stuff right now. All I'm looking to do is start to create a new foundation. She spent years being out of her tree and existing at like a 9 or a 10 on walks. So I need to just start creating some new patterns where she's just used to feeling a different way on walks. Now, you notice when if I correct a few times and I'm not getting it, There we go. There you go. There you go. I don't want to have to crank on her. I don't want to have to pop, pop, pop. If I'm doing that, it means the dog's too intense and the strategy isn't right. Now, if I use little pops and it helps cultivate a really nice walk, that's okay. But if I'm if I'm trying to fight through like mental and physical tension because I can feel in her body when she's tense she doesn't give to the prong at all so when I feel that that's when I know I need to go to my next thing which is most likely 180s if I pop and I don't that I don't know if you can see but she gave into it I know we're getting somewhere I know she's feeling it I know we're having a conversation if I pop and I don't feel any give or any change in demeanor I know we need another strategy maybe I can go a little higher on the pop but I don't want to go too high, and if I don't get it, then I need another strategy to get back to a better space. So this is pretty awesome, guys. So we're already getting a really nice beginnings of the walk. Just this foundation, once again, I'm not even worried about dog stuff really right now. All I want to do is start to create a new baseline, a new foundation of how do I feel on walks? Her feelings have been, I'm crazy on walks. Everything's a target, everything makes me nervous, everything makes me frantic. I want to create a whole new feeling around the walk. Walk is something I do in a relaxed, easy, non-stressed kind of fashion. Once we get some good foundation, then we'll start going after dogs. Once again, what's really important for you guys to see, I don't know if I've shared it in another video as clear as this, is that if you're not getting a response from your pop, You've only got a couple choices. You can go more firm, but I only want to go to a certain level. If I'm not getting a response and I feel that the dog's just too tense, I need a different choice. So you've seen me use these small pops, and as long as I've got a dog that's responsive to it, it's awesome. If she starts to get more intense, I might raise the level on the pop a little bit, but if I don't get a response, then I'm going to go to 180, two hands, pop, turn, go the other direction, and all of a sudden she's... She's broken through, and then I can talk to her at a lower level again. So she's getting a little, a little, this spot, she keeps getting a little anxious here. So, hi, we've got a loose leash and a really loud airplane. Hang on one second. You can see that already we got a really cool thing happening. We've got a dog that was out of her mind, completely disconnected from us. And now she's like really in a good space already. She's already like way more relaxed, more focused. I can actually engage with her without it, you know, being a negative thing where it's going to just make her more crazy. This spot tends to be a good one. See, she's already pulling again. So my options are I can pop a little bit more firm. There's breakthrough. She, she de-escalated, tuned back in. Ears are still not in a place that I'm crazy about, but she responded. Still responsive. If I did that and I didn't get a response and I could feel the tension in her body, I'd probably go to 180s, get her down a little bit lower, and then I'd get back to this. So hopefully that makes sense, just kind of having a double-tiered approach. You don't want to just, I see a lot of people just crank, 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 pop, pop, pop. You're not getting anywhere. You need to find a way to get the dog's intensity level down so you can talk to them at a, at a softer level so, so the whole conversation has a more gentle and less stressed bent to it. We got, we got some good work ahead of us, but um, I feel really good about it. Uh, I feel really good that she's as tuned in as she is within the first session. And uh, hopefully it's been some good information for you guys to see how do we take a dog at the very beginning and get him started on the prong and get him rocking and rolling and, and just get the foundation for a more easy, breezy, tuned in, less stressed walk so then we can start working on other big stuff. So that's it. I'm Sean with the good dog. That's Laura back there. This is Lola. And uh, we'll see you guys soon. Come on, Lola. Let's go.